They closed down the pubs around the Old Bailey today and sealed the streets. One of the UK's most controversial men was in court, although he thinks it's all a sham. This case is this case, which was eventually adjourned today, is a retrial of an alleged offence committed in Leeds and comes after a high-profile campaign for his freedom. But Robinson has previously been convicted of one other contempt of court charge for confronting suspects outside a court in Canterbury last May. The sexual grooming case by a Pakistani gang concluded with guilty verdicts but could have been disrupted by his actions. In an exclusive interview with Sky News, I asked Robinson not about the ongoing case, but the previous Canterbury trial, where he'd filmed the suspects outside court because he objected to the men being given bail. I believe that um, forewarned is forearmed. I believe that we should have education system going on across this. I believe in the legal system. I believe in yeah. the right of fair trial. Yes, and, and those men had a right to a fair trial. Nothing mm. I said could have prejudiced and that trial. Be, I'll, I'll be straight honest with you. If I believe I'm morally right, then I'm not bothered about what your law says. I know that, that I know. Really? Uh, in that so sense, you're not bothered about the law? In that sense. In so that, you're above the law? No, in that sense. If you're morally in that right, sense, you're above the law? No, if another young girl would have been raped in that shop, yeah? If another young girl would have been raped in that shop. So what I wanted to do, and all I wanted to do, you know, was get a video of the men's faces, and I knew it would have gone viral. Mm. And then I've gone to their shop already. I've already been yeah. to their shop. And then I want every single child and parent that lives within that vicinity to know what those men are alleged and to have done. And the court the says, right, we can't charge these guys now because uh, well, someone ha because you've <laughs> influenced the jury. No, what the do you not understand no, no. influencing the jury? Yes, I do. I've been on my own training courses. Influencing the jury is when you assume guilt. I said yeah, it. You do something to make a jury think that person might be more likely to be guilty. But I think their done DNA that. done that. I think yeah, the well, DNA I think that you're helping. No. You're helping. The, it doesn't okay, matter. I'll tell you what happened in that case. I'll tell, I'll tell you what happened. Like I'll tell you what happened in that case. Could easily get thrown I'll out. tell you what happened in that case. The judge let down the British public. Those men should have been in a prison cell. You potentially let down the British public. No, I potentially by didn't. Potentially committing a contempt of court that could have got the, the whole thing thrown out. Which it did. Do you not understand that though? Which do you didn't. understand that potentially it could have done? Um, I, do I understand? At the time, I'll be honest with you. At the time, yeah. I wasn't aware of contempt of court laws or okay. rules. You got any regrets? In August this year, he didn't want to talk to me. Why would I have anything to say to you? All you do is lie. That day, Robinson had just been released from prison. Hey, I've got like a lot to say, yep. nothing to you. His second contempt conviction over actions outside a court in Leeds had just been overturned. But he knew a retrial could see him going back inside. What does your is wife think of all this? What's my what's, wife? What's the, what, yeah, what, does she so tell you to, to, to give it up? I'll be, I'll be honest. I explained to my wife on this issue. I said that um, I'm going back to prison. Mm. And her answer was, I'll still be here when you get out. So, which is what I needed to know. And, and, and I'll be honest, when I landed in prison, in whole prison, the first phone call I made was they give you a pound's credit. So I rang my wife and just uh, I asked her, have you had enough yet? <laughs> have you had enough yet? Because obviously... What did she say? Um, she just couldn't believe what happened again. And it's mainly we had so m It's my children, I missed two of yeah. their birthdays. I am currently banned from attending any demonstration. The founder of the English Defence League made his name railing against the Muslim community over terrorism. He believes their holy text, the Quran, is designed to incite violence and create extremists. Have you read the Quran? Uh, I have read the Quran. Yeah, only, read the the only the English uh, version. And what did you think? What did you think? I don't speak it. What did you think? What do you think? Um, well, the the there's 109 verses in that book that incite war and murder against non-Muslims, so I thought pretty, pretty. Well, Jesus said, I have not come to bring peace but a sword. Jesus. So, yeah, so is he responsible for knife crime in London? Um, if, the, if they were holding up that, that verse, if every single knife criminal was holding up that verse, saying Jesus told me to kill him, so I well, killed him, I'd be saying, saying, I'd be saying, yes, that verse is responsible. Do you not think they've got a warped idea? I mean, we, we're not, we don't see Christians running around with swords. No, Do you no. not think they have a warped idea of what the Quran is actually preaching? Um, after reading the Quran and understanding abrogation and understanding that what, ha what Muhammad says later in his life supersedes what he says earlier, and after understanding all of that, no, I believe that they are um, following out literal, the well, literal then I would say to you that you've been radicalised. Would you? Yeah, I'd say that you're following the same understanding of Islam as the people who listen to Omar Bakri, who listen to Abu Hamza. Um, no, not just... If you really believe that. What about the 60%, 66% of people who would not report on a terrorist? Would you say they've been radicalised? No, I'd say you've been radicalised because oh, you believe yeah. in the same things as the followers 
of Abu Hamza. So because you I... and your support, you're the only people who believe it would take that literally, take the idea of not come in peace but bring a sword. Oh well, I'd better get a sword out. No, that's because I understand Islam. So I, you're not a theologian. I, you don't understand Islam. I do understand. You're Islam. not. I've been invited to come on Sky News. Ahead of our interview, Tommy Robinson told his thousands of supporters he's suspicious of our invitation. What I think they'll do is they'll, they'll dig up things I said 10 years ago. They'll say you joined the BNP when you were 20 years old. He's wrong. There's no need to drag up controversy from his past. Only last year, directly after the Finsbury Park mosque attack, in which Darren Osborne ploughed into a group of worshippers killing one, Robinson tweeted, the mosque where the attack happened tonight has a long history of creating terrorists and radical jihadists and promoting hate and segregation. You sound like, rather than saying, I absolutely outright condemn it. No, 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 no. You're no, saying, no, no. oh, look, here's all these reasons why that was maybe OK. Did you, as Sky News, cover the fact that tens of thousands of Muslims were marching with terrorist flags through our capital city on that day? Or did you not? I, 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 do you think what, it's news? Are you, are you, are you, it say, again, seems to sound like you're kind of trying to justify I'm gonna what ask, he was doing. I'm there, was you, no, I'm, there was a march. There was a march. So, no, there was a terrorist march. And, 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 they're, they're, and Darren Osborne tells everyone quite clearly well, why he says he's a done terrorist this. march? Because was the, they were he marching. Was the terrorist that day. They were marching with terrorist banners, terrorist flags, through the capital Darren, showing bomb, Darren bomb, Osborne bomb the was the terrorist that day. Yes, you right. accept that? Yes, you're correct. Yeah. Here he is. Home Secretary Sajid Javid recently said that high-profile cases of gangs of men who sexually abuse children have been disproportionately from a Pakistani background. Robinson feels this justifies his argument, although there are many forms of paedophilia and there are white sexual abuse gangs, including seven men jailed in Bristol in 2015. If you're worried about grooming gangs and paedophilia, why aren't you outside the courthouse of a bunch of white paedophiles who are raping toddlers and babies yep. in 2015. Why and, aren't I, you there? and I'm telling you that these gangs have been allowed to do it for 30 years. But I'm saying, well, what about the Catholic Church? Tens of thousands of children. Why Church. are you not outside their court I despise cases? the Catholic Church. Operation U Tree, have you ever stood outside an Operation U Tree, child? Have I? No. Why not? Is uh, it because they're white? Was, no, it's not because... Is it because they're not Muslims? It, no, it's not, no. What it's about, what about sex I, tourists? As I've just told you. What about people like Gary Glitter as who I've go abroad and rape children in Cambodia or the you know Philippines? What? Do you know Does what? that your upset job, you? Your job. I'm actually, unfortunately, I've had to come and fill a void and do your job. You're the mainstream media. No, I'm just asking what? you why you don't you, do that. And I'm telling you because I focused on exposing a phenomenon across this country. If you go to Holland, they actually created an educational video to be shown in schools to warn children about these crimes. When they tried to show that in Britain in 2007, the British establishment would not allow that video to be shown because, like you just go, oh, it would incite racial hatred. So because of people well, with... Well, it is going to incite. It is going to incite fear to suggest, to suggest that when you also know that there are, like the group in Bristol, white paedophiles. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I don't care if it incites fear so long as it educates the children and prevents them being raped. Okay? Do you really want to leave this into you in the, with the thought that you're happy to instill fear of a, of a community of, of 3.8 million people. If you watch every speech I've ever given, okay, I make it clear that it's not all Muslims. I make that very clear every time I talk, mm. okay, but just because the problem is identified from coming from that community, that, that, I'm not going to stop saying it or stop educating or stop telling the truth about it. Tommy, quick picture for me and Big Rob. Hero to some, villain to others. There's no doubt Tommy Robinson has become a public figure. He confirmed he wants to join UKIP. And the man who helped Donald Trump into the White House, Steve Bannon, has called Robinson the backbone of Britain. Would you take funds from Steve Bannon? He's a very wealthy man. Steve F Bannon has not offered me funds, so it's a ridiculous he's, he's not. Well, it's not. Uh, he might offer you funds. He's a big fan, obviously. Um, to be honest, I, I don't think I need funds. To, the, the work I want to do next is to reach out to the victims and families of these grooming scandals. Should we be giving him a platform? 600,000 people signed a petition to release him. He already has one. Only in interviews like this is he challenged. Jason Farrell, Sky News.